Welcome to Franchising Stronger Together. I'm your host, Red Boswell, president of IFPG, the International Franchise Professionals Group. And yes, we are joined today by another great leader in franchising, my good friend, Matt Kelton, Matt, COO of Show Homes. Welcome to the call today, Matt. Thank you, Red. Good to be here. Buddy, you and I have come a long way since we worked together at Pet Butler 15 years ago. You were the COO of mine for a short period of time till I wised up. I mean, till I uh, could. Hey, hey. <laughs> you were. You had a cool gig going interim, interim COO. Love that. Yes, I did. And then I got a real job, and then I've been here for 13 years. But it was a, uh, <laughs> it was fun. Had a great time with you, and uh, learned a lot actually. And I'm glad we've kept in touch. Well, I know where you're at today in beautiful Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, not far from me. How are you and the wife holding up? And I guess you got some kids back home from college at this point. Yeah, I thought that they were gone and now they came back. I thought it was an empty nester, but yeah, they're uh, one back from law school. One is uh, a senior now, but yeah, they're back. The wife is uh, working from home and uh, I've, I've worked from home for 15 years and, and uh, yeah, I think that's frankly, that's the worst part of this COVID thing is all these people in my house. I'm ready for them to get out of here. But, <laughs> Go back to freedom. But Oh yeah. But no, luckily we're all healthy and safe and uh, well, uh, been blessed. Let's, let's talk show homes. Uh, first, as we understand how you were impacted and how you responded, who the heck is show homes? Show, we are America's largest home staging network. We do staging, interior design, remodeling, and uh, home management where people live in homes while they're for sale. Um, We've been doing this since the 1980s. We've helped realtors and builders sell 30,000 homes valued at $10 billion. That's our official thing. Um, we have not been affected as badly as a lot of places. We were up 30% in the first quarter. We're still up double digits for the year. You know, Wait a minute, though. So, so what, is, what does this franchise cost? Give us insight there. We are a uh, $49,000 $49, franchise fee. So it's around 70 to 100 to get into. The franchise so a low investment franchise it's a lower cost home right. so you got franchises scattered all over the country they're not buying homes they are staging homes and sometimes having people live in the homes to manage the homes you're right. getting paid to stage the home you're getting paid maybe a little bit of income for the folks living in the home and you're getting paid to make updates to the homes that need the updates the redesigns done exactly um, okay and so and Real estate, has real estate been affected through the COVID crisis? I don't even know. You know, the real estate prices are actually up. And so if anything, there's been less inventory. Some people have delisted their homes, but you know, we're in our big time of year right now. This has been our typical spring hot selling season. And so people are still buying homes uh, and selling homes. And I think a lot of the, you know, the 30 million of, you know, people who uh, unfortunately lost their, their jobs, a lot of those honestly probably were not home buyers in a lot of cases. And so, it's not been as affected, you know, we're been open pretty much hundred percent around the country. So we're real estate is seen as an essential service. You know, you have to have food and water and shelter. And so, you know, we're lucky that, you know, economic conditions don't hit us as, as, as much as you know, a lot of these retail businesses that have had a big impact. So uh, we're thinking we're going to have a big summer. We've had a bit of a hit like everyone else, but how so? Uh, you know, you have, you know, less homes that are on the market. You know, you know, some people are afraid to stage their properties. We're doing less uh, occupied with people living in the home. And so we're my, mainly focusing on uh, vacant staging. And, but our, our guys are really busy, you know, and, you know, the business is coming back. And so I know they're busy if they don't call and fuss at me about something. And so I, my phones are very quiet right now. So <laughs> I know they're very busy. And so people are, People are trying to get moved. I mean, they, you know, your kids, you want to get them moved before the, the you know, school starts. And this is what we're seeing is a major compression of the biggest selling time of the year. And so we're thinking we're probably going to have our biggest summer ever. Huh. And so. Well, but, so they've been impacted somewhat from the real estate market. Um, have you as a franchisor changed your communications, amped up the volume of communications, uh, had any powwows to... Uh, understand how to maybe pivot your business at all or is it almost unsafe? yeah we had moved from having monthly phone calls that actually kind of like what i used to do with you at pup butler uh our guys have frankly got too busy and so we've moved to weekly calls and we really tried to get make sure everyone got you know ppp funds or any of the sba funds that are available uh, and so i think there's a lot of community and they needed to be able to talk and so uh, we wanted to make sure we were talking to all of them. We sent them PPE, you 
know, masks were, were required in most states. So we sent everyone uh, cases of those for, for people walking through the homes. We put in all the CDC guidelines to make sure that our franchisees were following those. We did major pushes for digital marketing to push traffic to their websites. And our traffic's actually more than doubled uh, across the network in the last so 60 days. You've increased days. your marketing spend. Yeah, because uh, for us, people are at home. They're looking at houses. They're, they don't have anything to do. So they're looking at Facebook. Uh, they're looking at Instagram. They're going on to Realtor.com. And so our, our overall leads have gone through the roof. And, you know, for us, you're it's You're talking it's overall leads. Overall for, leads. For our franchisees, huh. for people interested in staging their properties. And so, huh. but yeah, yeah, our franchise development leads are, are, are also, you know, up quite a bit. And just the, the quality and the, the people we're talking to is at a whole different level than three months ago. Expand on so, that. Right? So what about, um, so, um, yeah, let's talk your, your current pipeline. Pipeline is up compared to a normal month. Is that what I'd say it's been up over the last, you know, first part of the year. We're seeing a, a definite spike. You know, I think part of that additional marketing that, that we've seen is translated into franchise development. And, you know, we're just, you know, we have, we're tomorrow we're doing our first virtual uh, meet the team day. And, you know, we're going to have like eight, eight franchise prospects from around the country. And, you know, they're all A plus level people, you know, at a, frankly, a different level than we've seen lawyers and, you know, C level executives from different areas who are ready for a change. And I think, but, but your, is it, yours is not an absentee or semi absentee model. These folks are going to go into the business. Yeah. We've got business. people leaving, you know, six figure jobs because they want to do something where they can take advantage where they're creative something they're passionate about. And I think things like this show you that life is short and you don't need to be stuck in something that you, know, you don't like doing. So and there are a, options out there. So it's a lifestyle franchise. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So um, what happened to the folks that were in process? Maybe it's these eight, but they were in process in your discovery process when the COVID crisis hit in mid March. Did you lose them? Did they pause? Did they go ahead and move forward with the purchase? What happened there? Well, I think people definitely put the brakes on and we have, we lost some, you know, some of these people are still in there. Uh, you know, again, being in franchising 20 plus years from watching desert storm to nine 11 to, you know, when you have those major things, you see people, they, they sit at home, they're on the sidelines for a while. They're watching the news and they want to see what's happening. And so we're, we saw that in March and part of April, but we've seen, and especially in May, as the com country has reopened, we've seen just a, really a, a lot of pent up demand and uh, we're getting more interest than I can recall in a long, long time for people. And just the quality is, uh, we're reaching people. We're not having to chase people to, to get them on the phone. And so they're, they're, these are serious buyers and they're, they're ready for a change. Well, man, you grew up, I know your history, you grew up in franchising. Your father was a founder of a great franchisor. So uh, you've been through the crisis a number of times as you shared. Help, get, get the, there's a lot of franchisors ain't got a, a fraction of the experience in franchise <laughs> executive leadership that you, you have in your little pinky, you know. Right. Give us some guidance, some advice, uh, looking forward into the future. Well, this is part of us, you know, with franchising, with our franchisees, a lot of this is, you know, I feel like when you're a franchise, you're a, you're a combination of you're a coach, a cheerleader, and a psychologist. And so a lot of times it's just, it's, it's letting them know this is where great opportunities happen. You know, show homes happen and from the savings and loan crisis from the 1980s. And we think that uh, every time we see a crisis, we see, you know, opportunities for, you know, for business. And so... A lot of times it's just being patient, not panicking, but you also need to continue marketing. You can't just sit around and, and, and panic. You, you gotta be talking to your customers. We're real aggressive with our marketing aspects, reaching out to having our franchisees reach all of their database, uh, marketing aggressively. And so all of those things are, are gonna help pay off a long time. But it's, you know, it's like anything else. It's, you know, you've gotta be consistent with what you're doing. And you've got to build relationships. I mean, it's, it's all the basics that you and I have talked to over time. But, you know, this is also, when, when you have these opportunities, you can also roll out things that you haven't had time for. Right now, we're rolling out a whole financial 
system that's QuickBooks Online with T-sheets and Profit Keeper, just because we, you know, things just use up the time. And so we can, we're going to be able to study unit level economics, do benchmarking, and we've run, you know, rolled out a number of initiatives. And so I think part of this is letting the franchisees know that you're continuing to provide value in rolling out initiatives and programs. And they need to see that. They need to know that you care, that they're getting some, some bang for their buck. And because they're, it's, it's a tough deal, but if you're providing that and they see that and they feel confident, then, you know, that's going to help, you know, keep that momentum up. You know, we talk a lot about momentum in the past and that's a hard thing to get. And so this is a temporary blip and you can't let it paralyze you. And so we spend a lot of time talking about culture and that's the, you know, you don't, that's saying you create your culture or it creates itself. And so that's a big thing that I think that you can forget about. And so we've been listening to franchisees. We've been um, communicating more than we have in a long, long time. And, you know, I think our validation's good. You know, we're on our franchise business review. We won their top 50 award 10, 11 years in a row. We're in their, hit their hall of fame last year. You know, those are the things, those are the awards that I pay attention to. And, and we, you know, that's where we focus on each year on an executive level as well. Yeah. So in a family, in a, organization in a franchise or tough times will drive us apart or they'll pull us together and it's up to that zor which of those it's going to be if you're if you're listening if you're communicating if you're really going above and beyond to support your babies your franchisees your uh team uh they will never forget it and it will uh, last for decades to come because of what you're doing right now and you obviously are doing it right to get fbr 11 years in a row that's the hall of fame and that's it's a very strong yeah testimony. we're pretty proud of that and so you know there are a lot of awards out there that's the one that we focus on and yeah. they're just straight from the horse's mouth with the franchisees well matt kelton with show homes we appreciate you sir thank you for helping giving back franchising stronger together is the hashtag it's the show we're listening to today thank you from the bottom of my ifpg's heart and all our great consultants out there, we appreciate you. Appreciate all you're doing for franchise. All right. Thanks, Red. Appreciate it, bud. Talk to you soon. See you soon. Thanks. Bye.